looking a bit closer at the actual protocols, um, because as I said, they are quite different to what we're used to, and they are actually different for a reason. They are uh, certainly uh, trying to solve problems here, which we, people are seeing and are experiencing on running gateways. Um, so first of all, if the gateway starts up and it knows already its destination to which it connects to, what it will do, it, it will go through a discovery phase. Discovery meaning that it will connect to a certain endpoint, which it, it is configured to, advertise itself and will receive an actual uh, endpoint to connect to, the data endpoint. So this is a discovery phase, quite simple. It's just sort of a handshake where I receive the target LNS uh, gateway server endpoint to which I need to connect. So this is uh, a load balancing aspect that is built in here. You can shut off the connection at any time. Station will go back and connect to, uh, to the LNS discovery uh, endpoint and will expect uh, uh, the actual um, uh, LNS server endpoint to be inside the response. This allows you to redistribute your gateway population at any time. So what is this? So the message is exchanged over. So as a transport layer, I should say this uh, it uses uh, uh, web sockets, and the messages are encoded in JSON. Exactly. So this is uh, <coughs> quite standard here. So I, I, I wanted to highlight this a bit later, but basically. It's a TLS client uh, and, and server, so mutually authenticated channel, and using WebSocket as a transport layer and JSON as the message encoding scheme, um, which actually gives you a low latency bidirectional pipe. So if you think of other transport layers, this is really what gives you the lowest sort of latency uh, between the gateway and the backend. And it's bidirectional, so we can run uh, RPC type protocols over this uh, over this link. And uh, yeah, so we don't rely on, uh, on a message passing. It's rather RPC style. So basically, the requirement for the firewall or any firewall would be uh, open in the HTTPS. Okay. Exactly, exactly. So GCC also the requirement for firewalls, if they do deep, deep packet ins inspection, mm -hmm. this looks like normal WebSocket uh, link okay. to the firewall, right? And it's uh, TLS secured, so. Also, uh, corporate firewalls should not have a problem with this. That's both good and bad there, so. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So once a uh, station connects to the gateway uh, server endpoint, it will uh, again advertise its identity, uh, since the authentication already took place over TLS, right? Um, uh, or you can use HTTP authentication tokens. So the expectation is the authentication is already done here. So I just authenticate, or I just advertise my identity <coughs> and my version. And the router config response will contain the channel configuration, the channel plan that the gateway needs to listen to, and other aspects, other parameters that uh, uh, can be configured by the network server. So the router configuration is then pushed down. And uh, after the uh, channel plan has been applied to the radio, I'm listening to the spectrum, and we're in steady state, basically. And in steady state, a number of messages can be exchanged, and the simplest one is, of course, the uplink. As soon as I see something on the radio, I send an uplink message, and if the network server wants to schedule a downlink, it will uh, yeah, notify me with a down uh, message, uh, message, and I will acknowledge the transmission with a down TX message. So the, if the transmission uh, uh, actually takes place, I will send down the acknowledgement. If it does not take place, I, I ignore it. Do you, well okay, but you should actually be reporting why, why it didn't happen, because it was busy or because it didn't get it, or is there some of that? So the design decision in this uh, version, this is a certain aspect that, that is, is being uh, thought about, but the design decision this was that uh, this is actually not necessary from the network server implementation. If you uh, if you look at it, uh, the, uh, the error message could also get lost. So basically, you have to have a timeout anyway, after which you need to do some decision. So either you do a scheduling uh, the downlink over a different gateway, wait for the next uplink. So the sort of timeout that you need to do on the server side in order to uh, reach the decision whether the transmission has happened or not, you have to do anyway. So the error messages that you get are purely informative. 
We can well, certainly add yeah. this. The error messages that we get are a lifesaver when you have problems because we've had problems in the past and without error messages you just can't figure out what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I will get to a health and status reporting later. Uh, There's certainly a, an, an important aspect. 